Good evening, everybody. I'm Dave Eldon. With me is Dalton Grimes, and we have got a special treat for you tonight. You know, every night you bring a special treat, Dave. I sure do. Like like we had these delicious brownie bowl things. He did. And, he did uh, actually make treats. Yeah. And that was fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. You um, got to get everybody in the proper spirit for this sort of stuff. All you fans at home, check under your seat right now. Yeah, yeah. And, Dave uh, Eldon gave you a special brownie if, treat. If you're lucky, then uh, you know you might not even have to pay the tax on that Phyrexian Dreadnought. No, like, what's, what's a vehicle? I couldn't come up with this. Is this a consulate dreadnought? <laughs> consulate dreadnought. Phyrexian Dreadnought's the one drop 1212 or whatever. Oh, yeah. Did you know that Dreadnought is probably OU instead of AU? AU. Oh. I think it's AU. Yeah. Oh, no, it's OU. Take that. Don't oh, I guess it's not. Yeah. So, <laughs> the... got so it. everybody got a consulate Dreadnought. They were really cheap for me, but they're really big uh, and not very practical. Look how much ether's on there. I know, right? That's like. How, there's how many, no how many way. Ether born do you think you could make? There's there? no way that like they're using all that ether, right? We could probably just take some for ourselves. Yeah. But like, I... but what else we what else we could do if we needed some energy to, to help us cast our spells is we could just go the old fashioned way. And we could tap into that mana though. That's right. We could that we could mana. make some mana, and uh, that is what we're going to be doing tonight. We're going to be making a lot of mana because that is what our topic is tonight. We're Delving into the complexities of mana abilities. Wait, we're on Delve? Uh, see, Delve is not a mana ability. <laughs> you have to, like, that is one thing I've learned from becoming a judge, is that you have to be so careful. Don't worry, there's there's infinity magic cards With and magic everything. mechanics. You can always make a pun. 100% mm -hmm. guaranteed you can always make a pun. Always. Now, I am not one to make a pun you every time I possibly could, but that's only because I can't type fast enough. So, that's that's the problem. Yep. All right. So we got mana. Yes. But yes. I, I, I want it. I need it. I have to cast my spells. But um, how am I... Uh, how do you get it? How am I going to get it? Ah, well, you see, for that you need some mana abilities. And uh, that is some not the abilities? only source of mana in the game of Magic the Gathering. Uh, but it's probably one of the, one of the biggest ones. But... Whoa. Yeah, there's ways to get mana that isn't a mana ability, and we'll talk a little bit about that later on tonight. And yeah. it's pretty awesome. But uh, so, what is a mana ability? Well, are you gonna tell us? Well, no. I, I was asking you. I, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question. So, a mana ability um, is either an activated or triggered ability. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I did not know. That they could be triggered for a long time, and it was very bad. Well, if you were a co-host of the Judging Channel, then or if I'd read the Judging for the Wind blog yeah. about mana abilities, or if you've watched the video that maybe you're watching this as a video on YouTube right now, mm -hmm. uh, then then you would know all about both types of mana abilities. Yeah. So the most common that we find are activated mana abilities, yes. um, and an activated mana ability, um, it, it's. Oddly enough, it's more so about what they aren't than what they are. Hmm, interesting. Um, at least as far as restrictions go. So the most important thing is that a mana ability has to be able to put mana into your pool. Okay, well, that's, um, that makes sense. You would think. Um, uh, the second is that it is not a Planeswalker loyalty ability. Yes. And the third is that it does not have a target. All right. So... I you know, two things it's not, one thing it is. It's more about what, what it's not, David. Yeah. Like facts don't lie. Interesting. So then, uh, of course, if we have activated mana abilities, we have to have uh, triggered mana abilities. That is, that oh, is the other course, one. David. And, uh, of course. Uh, this is, this is kind of... Um, you, you do have to know these things, by the way. You, mm -hmm. you have to know like the three, the three qualities of a mana ability. And, and the triggered ability one has three also. Uh, the triggered ability is a mana ability if... It could put mana into a player's mana pool, so that's the same. Uh, and it doesn't have a target, and hey, that's that's the same too. And the, the third one is different. The third one is it has to trigger from activating a mana ability. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so that is the three things that you need to have happen if you want a trigger ability to be made a mana 
mm-hmm. ability. So you do have to memorize all those. Um, that is important because that is the only way that you can tell. And there, there are some close ones that maybe might not look like they should be but are, or maybe don't look like they would be but they are, or maybe they look like they wouldn't be uh, and they aren't. So there, there's lots of different ways that it can go. Mm-hmm. So those those are so so because it's important we're gonna go through it one more time. An activated ability is a mana ability if it doesn't have a target and it could put mana in your mana pool and it isn't a loyalty ability. And a triggered ability is a mana ability if it could add a mana to your mana pool, it doesn't have a target, and triggers from activating a mana ability. <clears throat> um, so that is how you do it. Yeah. So how would I use a mana ability, David? How do I go about it? When can I do it? All right. Can I just like do it now? Maybe. Right now, I'm gonna I'm gonna tap a mana ability. You probably can. There, there's lots of different times that you can. Do activate. you have to be playing a game? Uh, yes. Like, hmm. Executive decision. Yeah. According to judging for the win, you must play a game. Well, remember, uh, re- remember that abilities only function in general uh, on the battlefield. Now there are certain exceptions, but. You know, most of the mana abilities that I'm familiar with uh, would not fall under any of the exceptions that allow you to activate the abilities from outside the game. No, so. I think it's also fair to say you have to be playing a game. So I mean, it's important to be technically correct. Yeah. The best kind. So um, one of the most important things to know is that a mana ability does not use the stack. And this is kind of, to me, what separates them from a lot of other activated abilities out there. Oh, for sure. As well as leads to a lot of potential confusion um also for sure yes um so if i start my turn i go to my upkeep and or start my pre-combat main phase and i want to start by casting a spell and i tap my lands for mana my opponent can't respond before i start casting a spell that's not allowed because by tapping those mana i don't ever pass priority it's something that I can do without the chance for them to interact with. Um, same goes for a triggered ability. Even though they're triggers, and you might think, oh, trigger stack. I saw that on Judging for the Win. That was an excellent podcast or stream. Boy, it was. <laughs> uh, and I know that's the voice you have out there. That's, um, that was, that's how I talk all the time. Perfect. Um, if it's a triggered ability from a mana source that specifically occurs from activating a mana ability, opponent still can't respond to that and it will go and it will trigger immediately and you get that mana it doesn't use the stack your opponent can't respond to it so i think utopia sprawl is probably my go-to there so uh, why don't you pull that bad boy up there david this is uh from a recent printing yes very recent yeah what like a month ago recent somewhere in there i think so, as you took your sprawl on your spellfield, choose color. Whenever Enchanted Forest is tapped for mana, its controller adds one mana of the chosen color to his or her mana pool. So, by tapping the forest for mana, by activating that mana ability, this triggers. And in doing so, it creates mana. It is a mana ability and does not use the stack. David, have you seen... Are, are you much of a superhero movie fan? Uh, I have not seen the movie. No spoilers? No, no, no. Not that. Okay, um, okay. Guardians of the Galaxy 2. All right. Have you seen it? No, I have not seen okay. it. Okay. This kind of looks like the uh, world where uh, Ego lives. Hmm. Hmm. So any of you fans out there? I, 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 I like how I'm pretending to know what that yes. talks about. Whoa. So that's well, what Ego's world looks well, like. Well, that's huh? also no spoilers. Yeah, uh, well, very, I, I do my best. Yeah. There, there might be those among us in the audience who have not seen before also. So we will, we will respect their right to watch the movie going in cold uh, if that's what they so desire i don't know how yes. old is that movie which one guardians of the galaxy 2 yeah. like two years all right so so that that's still reasonable yeah, we're past have seen yeah it, but wanted to see it but, mm-hmm. you know probably also not reasonable for us to be like tiptoeing around i still haven't seen bad. it so so wait wait a minute are you trying to give me i'm like no i'm like oh, 30 on. minutes oh, in. oh wow okay. yeah Okay. So, anyways, what what were we talking about tonight? We're David? talking about our favorite mana. Mana. So this abilities. is my favorite one. Um, but tried David, and true. Ooh, is that Teleria uh, in the art there? It could be. I Ooh. mean, there's lots of blue mana over there. I know that for so, sure. So, David, I'm noticing that on this card here, yeah, I see a very pretty blue symbol. That's true, but I don't see a mana ability. 
Um, well, that, that's an interesting point. Uh, you know, a lot of people, when they see the basic lands, uh, you know, that might be, might be a little off-putting. Uh, it, it, might, it might help you if you were to, let's see, if you, if you were to see a different type of island. Okay. So if, if you see an island that uh, has all the text on it, then it might look something like this. So this is this is kind of an OG island here, and you see it has the tap symbol. So this text here, there's actually a thing in the CR that says that every uh, land that has the basic land type island has this ability mm -hmm. on it. Uh, whether whether the text box has words or symbols or whatever, any of islands printings have this ability by virtue of the fact that it is a land type and island. Mm -hmm. And so with that being the case. Uh, we'll, we'll dissect this ability just a little bit here. So you see that it is an activated ability, so there are three characteristics that we need it to have. So, uh, of, of course, the first one it satisfies. It uh, can add mana to your mana pool. You bet it can. And uh, also not a loyalty ability. This, nope. this printing of Island far predates the existence of loyalty abilities. Yes. And uh, finally, it has the, the property that has no targets. Mm -hmm. And with, with those three being that, we can confidently assert that this is an activated mana ability. You bet. Yep. So... Um, a new fun ruling, uh, an update to the CR states that, um, or an update to Oracle text states that cards no longer add mana to your mana pool, like ah, yes. on the card, they just add mana. It could be your mana jacuzzi. It could be your mana, um, sink. It could be any number of things, but yep. it doesn't have to be your it, pool. It doesn't add it to your mana pool anymore. It just says yep. add green. So this is the templating that Magic is going to be using going forward, and so that's that's kind of cool. Yeah, so in theory, all forests that you see will have Tap this add ability. Yep. Tap, add green. Yeah, we, we unfortunately were not able to pull up an island that said tap, add blue, because there haven't been any of those. Maybe wizards will hear our pleas and uh, print one. Uh, like, oh, how cool of a judge promo would that be? <laughs> like a basic island, but it, but it had like tap add blue, yeah, and then like maybe the a white border and like not foil and the ugliest artwork you could put on a magic card. <laughs> it's literally just like a high school water fountain. Wow. There, there's your island. Wow, where was that in unstable? Come on, wizards. Um, great. great I, I do want to give it up for that art of land of our elves. Yeah, I dig it. I uh, do. So I it. I personally am not a fan, and that is because I'm going to be using my. Uh, FNM promo land or elves, which I finally get to dust off after several years of not standard legality. Yeah. Um, so those those are finally making a. Have a there comeback. been more FNM promos or just the most recent one? What do you mean? Because wasn't there a promo for land or elf? Yeah, I had Dominaria. No, no. Okay. I thought there was. Uh, well, maybe, maybe there is. I don't know. I think not so. yet. Not yet. There I isn't. Think so. um, I know they had opt. Maybe it was pre-release. I, I don't know. They have lots. They have another. They have a judge promo land worlds too, which is Ooh. very, very nice. I, I only have one of those though. All right, so mana abilities. They're yeah. great. You Let's, need them. Yeah. Why do you need them? Well, to, to cast, cast spells, up. which is more or less probably a good thing in Magic. So David, I'm gonna run you through a little gauntlet here. Okay. 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 So we've talked about lands and whether or not a land has a mana ability, yeah. which we've covered. We usually do. Um, what about overgrowth? Okay, so uh, overgrowth is kind of a similar one to, to your favorite mana ability. So we notice that this here uh, has the, the ability, whenever enchanted land is tapped for mana, its controller adds green green to its mana pool. So that is a mana ability. Uh, this is a triggered mana ability. So let's, let's take a look at the, the three characteristics. This can add mana to your mana pool, and it is not a targeted ability, mm -hmm. and it triggers, and this is, this is the one that like kind of is, is like the hardest one, I, I suppose. So it, it triggers from, and I'll, I'll read you guys out the, uh, from the CR because, uh, again, technically correct, the best kind. Mm -hmm. um, it triggers from the resolution of an activated mana ability or from mana being added to a player's mana pool. And so this says uh, whenever enchanted land is tapped for mana. Uh, so this triggers from mana being added to a player's mana pool. Uh, there, there, is a, there is a thing in the CR that specifically uh, describes what tapped for mana means, and that is a part of what that definition is. So, sure. Yep, totally works. Awesome. Totally now, works. we were talking about some pointy-eared elves. Yeah. What yeah. about the, oh, I don't know, one of the most OG elves, Rothalos? Yeah. 
Lanoir's if, if you have never uh, played a cube draft with this card, my friends, uh, let's. And I don't think you've ever cube let's drafted. Let's just say that him and his BFF upheaval are uh, coming to coming to get your perms. So. Ooh. Yes, that is correct. So he, he, add green to your mana pool for each forest you control. Cool. Yeah. That is pretty cool. But what if I cast it off of, you know, some Gaia's weird Cradle? Gaia's Cradle? Gaia's Cradle That's not a one. forest. No, it's not. It's it's a four hundred dollar super forest, but four hundred dollar not forest. Yeah, it's, it's very expensive for not being a forest. Uh, so mean... what if I don't have any forests? Is yeah. it still a mana ability? It sure is. It sure is. But. But mana abilities say they have to add mana. All right, so again, we will read exactly from the CR so that we will put any such misinformation to bed. A activated ability is a mana ability if it meets all the criteria, doesn't have a target, and could add mana to a player's mana pool. Uh, so that, that being the case, uh, this could add mana to your mana pool if there were a forest in play. Uh, this uh, this uh, <clears throat> fits into another kind of interesting thing. Like, uh, here, here's one of my favorite. Uh, cards and magic. I play this card all the time. Sure. Uh, Command Tower. So if you were to play this in a legacy tournament, uh, there would be a problem because <laughs> you would not have a commander, and so you would not be able to add any mana to your mana pool. However, if you were to play this in a legacy mm -hmm. tournament, you could still activate the ability just fine. Uh, that is a legal play that you could make. And even if you don't have a commander, the ability is still a mana ability because it could add mana. Hmm. Uh, that is that is what that phrase means in that context mm -hmm. very cool yep all right so next one what about another legacy favorite lion's eye diamond right. Slight, slightly more slightly more playable in legacy than uh <laughs> command a, a land that t doesn't have any <laughs> abilities to do anything do you uh, think that's a savannah lion in the back uh i no i think it is a i think it is a um Mine diamond eye lion. <laughs> Those were four words. I, 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 it's, it's like that, uh, you know, how to make a good password comic where you pick four words and string them together. All right. Yeah. So this this lion here heroically gave up its eye so that I could play a pseudo black lotus in Legacy, and uh, for that I'm I'm very thankful. Is this a mana ability? Yes. So what do you think? It is it is a mana. Okay. So again, we'll, we'll go through all of the criteria. Uh, this is an activated ability that could add mana to your mana pool, and it does. And it also has the ability to, um, it, it also has no targets, and it also has um, not a loyalty ability. Again, predating those by quite a bit. Sure. So yes, this does have all of the qualities that we are looking for in a mana ability, and it has some weird text on it that uh, does not affect whether it's a mana ability or not. So it does have the restriction there. Yes. Activate this ability only any time you could cast an instant. A timing restriction, yes. So we talked earlier, and we said that a mana ability does not use the stack. That's true. But this Lion's Eye Diamond almost seems like it has to. Yeah, so that is that is an interesting fact, and we will be going over this a little bit later uh, about mm -hmm. why this text appears on Lion's Eye Diamond, but it is a very mm -hmm. stimulating conversation, believe me. Uh, okay. Now I've got one for you, Dalton. What sure. about this card? Another another potential le legacy playable Ooh. Deathrite Shaman. Everyone's so, favorite one mana Planeswalker. Yeah, it's, it's very good. Um, awesome. So these are not loyalty abilities, by the way, so don't be fooled. Um, ha, hit him with the curveball. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so we, we'll be restricting our attention, obviously, to the, the first one. Obviously, okay. uh, the, the other two abilities, while also very relevant, are, are clearly not mana abilities. But what about this top one here? Yeah. So Death Rite Shaman leads to a lot of great scenarios. Um, you tap For the cost of tapping it and exiling a land card from a graveyard, yeah, you can add one mana. Cost. What? Yeah, that is, that in fact, not. Cost. Yeah, so that's where the problem lies. Um, Deathrite Shaman's activated ability, as we know, activated abilities read uh, cost, colon, effect. Um, the colon for Deathrite Shaman's first ability comes after the tap. Yes. So exiling a land card from a graveyard is actually part of that ability. Yes. Because it targets, Deathrite Shaman is not a mana ability. Even though the 
target isn't related to the mana produced. It's not like it has to be one color from that target land or anything crazy. The fact that it targets keeps it from being a mana ability. Yeah, and there is some really interesting consequences of Deathrite Shaman that, uh, that that has. So, for example, let's say I'm going to activate my Deathrite Shaman and I'm going to tap to get a green. Sure. Okay. Cool. So, but but there's a problem, and the problem is you also have Deathrite Shaman. Ooh. So. Got him. Yeah. Using your Deathrite Shaman, you can respond to my ability because since it's not a mana ability, it has to use the stack mm -hmm. just like any pleb normal activated <laughs> ability. And uh, with that being the case, you can respond to my Deathrite Shaman by activating your Deathrite Shaman to make a mana using the same land. Mm -hmm. And then when my ability tries to resolve, the targets won't be legal, so nothing's mm -hmm. going to happen. And yes. that's going to be sad. So yeah, dueling death rights is definitely a thing in Legacy. Uh, the the other thing that can happen and, and definitely does happen. Um, this is exactly how like for example, if I if I like exile an instant in your graveyard, then you get me with the Snapcaster Mage mm -hmm. and you flash back that instant. And not only do you get the value out of the Snapcaster Mage, but I also don't get to drain you for two because the the target of that ability isn't there anymore. So mm -hmm. very very uh, important thing to be aware of if you're a Legacy player is how some of those. <laughs> That's it's a magic Shaman great work. game. Yeah, well, I mean, Legacy is a great game because um, you get to play cards like Deathrite Shaman. But, uh, you know, other formats have sweet stuff like that too sometimes. Mm -hmm. So, okay. <clears throat> like Modern. Modern is a great format, right? Because you, you get cards like, uh, well, you don't get Deathrite Shaman, but you get this. No. You get I actually have necessary. four of these foils in my Modern deck. Mm -hmm. yep. My whole play set. Oh, boy. Uh, great card. Love it. Do you like do you I, like activating ma or triggered mana abilities? I do love triggered mana abilities. Well, that's Unfortunately, great. Unfortunately, this is not one of them. Why not? Um, look, look, it adds mana to your mana pool. It does add mana to your mana pool. Oh, yeah. It's also not a loyalty ability. Well, that, that's a triggered ability, so like you know. Yes. The, the, doesn't uh, it doesn't target. Is yeah. yes. Um, it, it's still not a loyalty. It's definitely ability, not so. a loyalty ability um, for sure. But. Uh, even though it's a trigger and it produces mana, it does not trigger from activating a mana ability. Yeah, and that is so. This does not meet the criteria. Yeah, that that is where that comes into play. So a lot of a lot of the time, um, I would I would read that and I would be yeah, it's, it's like kind of kind of weird, right? Mm -hmm. Because it, it seems like this should be a mana ability. Sure. Um, and, and that that is the reason why it's not is because. The thing that it triggers on is, is Burning Tree Emissary and Ring the Bell. Mm -hmm. So, so why why would this not be a mana ability? Is is there a reason that you can think of thematically why why you would not want this to be a mana ability? That I can think of, probably not. Okay. I bet you have something. Though. I I do have something. <laughs> um, and so this is this is a uh, example of a uh, philosophical. Let's examine what we what we are trying to do with mana abilities. Why is it that we can activate mana abilities at special times? Why is it that you cannot counter mana, uh, mana abilities with with counter spells that can target those types of things? To make more judge calls, yeah, duh! Well, I, it's I, a conspiracy. I guess there's, there is that, but like the the real reason is because it, it doesn't make sense within the game. Uh, when when you're playing a spell, mm -hmm. the the thing that they should be countering is the spell. Sure. Uh, and the thing that should be using the stack is the spell. Mm -hmm. um, and so as a result of that, uh, the mana ability philosophically mm -hmm. shouldn't count as, you know, a step that I have to do before I cast a spell and then I cast the spell. It should be like part of casting the spell, mm -hmm. right? Now this is not, right? With, no. with, with our friend, the Burning Tree Emissary here, the, the adding the mana philosophically does not fit with the process of casting the spell. It, no. it fits with the effect that you get after the spell happens. Sure. And so as a result, this this would not philosophically fit with what mana abilities are trying to do. So yeah, that is that is why we have that rider on triggered abilities, why you know it has to trigger off of a mana ability. Yeah. Seems awesome to me. Okay, so let's see what our next uh, thing on the docket is. Ooh, this is a sweet one, right? Right? It is. Uh, what a swell Seder fella. Yeah. Um, so Voyaging Seder. Oh, I didn't realize that was a reprint. Is oh, it, uh, hmm. is it conspiracy? Yeah, is it conspiracy. Very nice. On Gatherer, I cannot find, like, the card search feature. I can't find original conspiracy printing. It's really strange. Hmm, like, I don't unusual. think it's on there. Um, so Voyaging Seder. Untap. 
or tap it to untap target land. Yep. So that makes you mana. Sure does. Cool. But uh, it fails two tests here. Um, yeah. So uh, obviously the first one is it said the word target on it. So yes. Like, okay. So it says target. Um, also, this ability does not create you mana. No. Directly. Um, so even though by using the ability you're probably going to produce yeah, eventually mana eventually you're future. going to get some mana like we we, um, we know what's going on here guys we know what's going to happen we know the end result um however since this ability itself does not generate the mana yeah. this is not a mana ability it's a cool activated ability it revolves around mana yeah so here's here's another example of, of an activated ability that you know is a mana ability except not in the rules uh, so this this again uh, would, would be an example this doesn't even have a target uh, so nope. with with this type of ability it's it's again not a mana ability due to the fact that this ability doesn't add mana to your mana pool yeah, it meets two criteria yeah but so we're, we're close but not not quite no cigar not quite there yet mm -hmm. all right so up next is Xenagos. Yes. Not Xenagod, Xenagos. The, the, the Planeswalker one. Yes. Now, with, with this, we're going to be, uh, just like the Deathrite Shaman, we're going to be restricting our ability to obviously the top ability. Yeah. Uh, the, the one that, like, potentially could be a mana ability. Obviously, mm -hmm. like, Seder tokens and, like, I don't even know what, like, randomly get seven Seven permanents, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. Hope, hopefully you get seven <laughs> Emeralds or something. Like, I don't know. So, so yeah, the top ability. Mm -hmm. what, what do we think about this? So add X mana in any combination of green or red to your mana pool, or X the number of creatures you control. Right. Sounds pretty great. So uh, again, this is like this is like Ropelos. Uh, th there's a chance you don't have any creatures and you wouldn't add any mana. But again, we aren't looking for does it add mana. We're looking for could it add mana. And that that definitely could add mana to your mana pool. So we're, we're good there. Um, and then then for activated abilities, the next one is not having a target. So Deathrite Shaman did have a target. This does mm -hmm. not. And then there, there might be there. There's one more. Uh, what what was the third one again? Not a specific spell? type of ability here. Uh, loyalty abilities. Loyalty. Ooh, well, okay. So we're the, the jig is pretty much up. Uh, Xenagos can counterfeit pretty pretty effectively, but he can't meet all three criteria because obviously this would be a loyalty ability. This mana ain't loyal. So as as a result of that, you are able to uh, respond to this type of ability. Feel feel free to quote me on that. Not all right. Not at all. So, uh, I kind of spilled the beans here on this one. Oh, don't um, worry. We we've got some we got some backups here. But uh, we've got some great great legacy cards. Dark Ritual. Gosh, how many how many awesome legacy cards are, are there going to be for examples here? Like it's going to be a lot, right? Yeah. Um. So this is this is Dark Ritual, and you you might notice that for example, uh, the, this adds mana to your mana pool, right? Mm -hmm. Indeed it does. And uh, so maybe, maybe you might be thinking that uh, this is a mana ability. But of course, it's not an ability, it's a spell. Mm -hmm. uh, so no, this this is not a mana ability. Now, the thing that makes this a little bit confusing is if you go back in time a little bit and uh, um, you know maybe maybe you look at some previous yeah. wordings, look, look, it's it's the same card, except uh, if, you, mana if, you source. Take, if you draw your attention to the type line, it actually says mana source. So uh, th this is, of course, not the uh, oracle text of Dark Ritual. No. But it look, it look, it's a mana ability. It says right on the card it's a mana ability. It does not Come say on. it's a mana ability. Come on, guys. Shouldn't, shouldn't that work? David does not don't, say don't it's a mana ability. Don't spell pierce me, bro. Don't spell pierce me. It doesn't say it's Gosh. a mana ability. So, yeah, um, uh, again, back in the oldie days of magic, that was the philosophical thing that was going on with the dark ritual is that you were using it as as a thing as part of the process of casting your spell mm -hmm. uh, and so with that being the case it made sense for this to be kind of considered like a mana ability or have, have its own special mana sure. ability type of properties uh, nowadays that is of course not the case and so dark ritual will not be considered a mana ability mm -hmm. Uh, so All right, we're getting close to the end of our list. We, we've got some great ones, though. Don't worry about it. We yes. save the best for last. But... And if you have any questions out there, we would love to answer. Oh, absolutely, them. we we love answering questions. It's kind of what we do here on uh, the Judge Channel. Uh, mm -hmm. It's high time that we get. Um, so it's, you know, we, we're getting on theme with those merchant scrolls on the Judge promos. Uh, now it was got, bad. Now we got the high. It was time. good, but yeah, it was bad. It, it was a great pun. Don't. All right, until end of turn, whenever a player taps an island for mana, a player adds blue to his or her mana pool. 
in addition to the man that the land produces. In addition, so, yeah, read parentheses. That's that's all in here. Reminder yeah. text is italicized text that tells you rules you already know. Yes. So, all right, let's read it. Until end of turn, whenever a player taps an island for mana, so we're tapping a land. Okay. We have whenever we're trigger. Yeah. That's uh, adds blue to his or her mana pool. Could looks like a looks pool. like a triggered ability to me. This, this is a triggered mana ability that high tide generates. Uh, <clears throat> Now, to be 100% clear here, high tide is not a mana ability, no. right? The uh, the high tide could, of course, be responded to if it uses a stack just like a normal spell. Mm -hmm. High tide is a normal instant spell, but when this normal instant spell resolves, it creates a magical uh, effect in the magical. game of magic. Uh, and, and that magical effect is a triggered ability that triggers whenever you tap. And so that is uh, that is a mana ability. The triggered ability that gives you mana when you tap your islands, or when they tap their islands, because this is before they started printing stuff that only worked for you, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that is a mana ability. <clears throat> yeah. So our, our next one, and th the next yeah. one is another kind of a sweet one. We'll, we'll let Dalton talk about this one here. Oh, gosh. I don't, I don't know how oh, sweet a magic card this could be. All right, so I'll take care of that while you're uh, hitting up the chat there, David. Yeah, there, there's a, an awesome person in the chat right. we're going to respond to. So the card we're looking at now is Selvala Explorer Return. Not that new Selvala. Not the not the NG Selvala, the OG no. Selvala. NG? Sort of. Is that? New gen. Okay. Well, yeah, I got generation. it. I got it. But All right, so parlay, tap, colon. So we know we're ability here. Yeah, we, we know Each this player ability. reveals the top card of his or her library. Now we're added to there. Um, for each non-land card revealed this way, add green to your mana pool and you gain one life. Then each player draws a card. So, let's look through our list. Is this a loyalty ability? Nope. Is this, can this produce mana? Uh, this has the potential to create mana. Um, in theory, any number of non-land cards could be revealed this way, could create mana. So it meets that regard. And then it doesn't have a target. Uh, looking carefully through this text, there is no word target here. Boy. So this was, meets all of our criteria. That was really bad. The fact that they like made this be a mana ability. Yeah. Like, I'm very sad about that. <clears throat> I guess this is indeed a mana ability. Even though it draws cards and like does all kinds of wacky extra stuff and might not even give you mana, it's a mana ability. Chromatic Sphere is also in this. Sure it same is. Same weird world of shouldn't be but is. Yep. Yeah, so th this uh, this is a mana ability. Now, Chrom Chromatic Star also has a mana ability, uh, but it, it has a triggered ability that is not a mana mm -hmm. ability. So <clears throat> that is, in fact, uh, a more a more realistic version of Chromatic. Chromatic Sphere. Star has two abilities. Chromatic Sphere has one. Just one. All right. So now we are we are in an awesome spot. Um, we we've gone through all of our all of our things that we were gonna that we were gonna talk about. Except for uh, wait 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 we, we we might have one more we we've got one extra special treat for all of you is this a mana ability as it enters the battlefield choose color okay, nope that's, that's replacement not. effect got him got him got him we talked about those before creatures right. you control get plus one plus one hey that's static a power toughness ability. got him continuous effects oh we love talking about continuous effects and that's coming up sometime soon. Yeah, we know that's coming. <laughs> I see you, Magnivore. All right, well, one more though. One more ability that this has. Um, is when, this a mana ability? Whenever a lands ability adds one or more mana of the chosen color to your mana pool, add one additional mana of that color to your mana pool. All right, this is pretty sweet. So what's our trigger say? Yeah, this is a triggered ability. Doesn't target. Yes. Doesn't look like it targets to me. Yeah, it definitely adds mana. Could add pool. mana. Sure, yep. Sure. Sounds great. And then, can you pull up that specific wording for me there, David? Oh, I'd love to see that absolutely, specific Absolutely, my wording. friend. So this is a, uh, a triggered mana ability. Is a mana ability if it meets the following criteria. doesn't have a target. It triggers from the resolution of an activated mana ability. Okay. Or from mana being added to a player's mana pool. All right. And then Cage Sun says, whenever a land's ability adds one or more mana of the chosen color to your mana pool. So, yep. Totally works. This yep. this uh, triggers from uh, the the requ requisite type of triggered event, not not a tricky trick uh, of any kind. Now this is kind of a another related type of thing. Uh, this 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 one we're gonna see is this a mana ability? If you tap a permanent for mana, 
it produces twice as much of that mana instead. Yeah, how about this? I mean, it does basically the same thing, right? Like, as, as a cage stun, which we, we already said was a mana ability. Man, that art is it, it, something. You, you, Shadowmore, in general, had a lot of that. Yeah. And uh, I, I did not like the art direction uh the, the art style of shadow more block i, I know some, some of it really was did. really cool uh in general i'm not a fan like so is it secluded glen the blue black fairy land yeah that's just beautiful yeah we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that one. We'll, we'll give you that little treat here yeah, we'll, we'll show you that one when we're done talking um, about this one so if you tap a permanent for mana it produces twice as much of that mana instead so this it looks like a replacement effect to me. Yes, indeed. This is not a mana ability because it's too busy being a replacement effect. Yep. So what's important to know here is the word instead. Yes. Um, and lets not us win know that another. this is not a trigger at all. Um, and so though it will help you create mana, uh, mana reflection itself is not a mana ability. So secluded Glen for my friends. It is quite beautiful. Um, yes. I, I uh, tapped many glens. That's some art. That is mm, fantastic. So now now we really are out. Now we really don't have any more uh, sweet, is this a mana ability or not. So right. we're, we're going to talk about some questions. So if here's, you have any. Yeah, if, if you have any questions, in the chat. go ahead and throw that in the chat. We love answering questions. Here's a here's a question. Uh, another awesome land with pretty sweet art. The you got, you got like a dragon head or some nonsense in the background. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty sweet. So can you use Stifle to, uh, to fix fix this problem here? Um, so for those of you who don't know, Stifle's a pretty neat card. It, it is kind of a sweet card. Counter target activated or triggered ability. Yeah. So what we know about mana abilities is, is they don't use the stack. So uh, an activated or triggered ability that produces mana, in theory, won't be able to be responded to if it is a mana ability. Flooded Strand and all similar lands thereof, um, we're not just picking on this one, though they will eventually allow you to get more mana, are not mana abilities. They do not directly create mana in the mana pool, and so something like Cracking a Fetch Land is not a mana ability. Yep. It is just an activated ability and therefore can be stifled. So you got some hardcore or blowouts. Disallowed going on. or nimble obstructionist yeah, or yeah. any sorts of things. The the ooze the, the ooze one? What's it called? The, oh the green void slime. Or, void slime. Blue blue green? Yeah. 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 It's, it's an honorary ooze. Yeah. Honorary ooze. Well, no, that's that's what the flavor text says. It's oh, like, it's technically an ooze, even though its lifespan is like one second long. So yeah, I read it, and it's like basically just a strictly worse disallow because it has more mana specific requirements. Yeah, it, it's uh, it definitely does. But being able to run two of them in commander or eight of them in a deck seems kind of cool. Yeah, and, and it was before uh, disallow, so yeah. You know, this is a very rare ability, uh, countering yeah. activator or triggered ability. So there you gotta, gotta it's be pretty careful. Neat. It's still See, special. I think that cancel or not cancel disallow should probably be run more in modern, because Maybe. I know Get that those it's sweet fetchland activation. Well, I know that it's three, and you can get fetchland activations, but you can also get storm triggers. Yeah, yeah. Which I think would be great. Uh, you those. could get some like goofy humans triggers, like a Thalia's lieutenant or something. You, you could, you could like depending Thalia's on where you're at in the, you could do that as well. That would make sense. Um, but there are like but some sweet things you could do. Probably not with vial, so maybe. Yeah, you could stifle the ether vial interaction. Be pretty sweet. Yeah. So here's another. Here, here's one. Now we're gonna talk about this. Okay. So lines of diamond. We we talked about it before. We talked what about is, the art. What is the deal with this with this line of text? The activate this ability only anytime you could cast an instant. Okay. Right. Why? So, why? Why? So the important thing here um, is looking at Lion's Eye Diamond's cost of activation. Okay. Sacrifice it and discard your hand. Yes. So if what what the what those who created the card wanted was for you to be empty-handed when you were activating this ability, they didn't want you to have any cards in hand when you create the mana. Yeah, we we already tried the the one where you didn't discard your hand, and it was a little a little too good. So yeah, sure. So let's say that I want to minor drawback on that. Oh, what's a good three mana spell? 
Uh, trained Armadon. Trained Armadon. Yeah. Great. Awesome. We're going to cast our Trained Armadon. Um, it, it is three, right? Oh, for you, sure. You're not... For sure. Okay. Cool. So we're going to cast our Trained Armadon. Um, I will go through the steps of casting a spell. I will put it onto the stack. I will determine cost. You know, I, I don't have any targets or anything for this. No distribution. Determine cost. Activate mana abilities. So by this point in time, Trained Armadon is no longer in my hand. Yeah. It is on the stack. Perfect. And I would be able to use Lion's Eye Diamond to discard my hand that I don't have anymore to activate the ability. Yeah. So in order to fix this problem, to not allow you to do so when casting a spell, the creators, you know, the designers of Lion's Eye Diamond added that little bit of extra text that's text that says activated only anytime you could cast an instant, which is not allowed yes. during the casting of a spell. Yes. So that is why we have this timing restriction on LEDs, because otherwise you could use it anytime that you can activate a mana. It's like, oh, black like is. So let's great. Let's let's take a, a slight detour and talk about um, what what kinds of times that we could uh, activate a mana ability because th this is kind of an interesting uh, a thing to talk about. Sure. So where where can we use it? Well, uh, it, it's not whenever you want. Um, no. It, it is very close to that. It's whenever you pretty much whenever you want. Kind of whenever you need it. Yeah, mo mostly whenever you need it. Uh, so there there is in fact a list uh, in, in the in the comprehensive rules that says all the different times that you can activate a mana ability. Um, we're not going to go through the entire list, um, but the, the general gist of it is anytime you need a mana payment for something. Uh, and and yeah. so stuff in the game asking for a mana payment means that you can activate a mana ability. Mm -hmm. And that, that, that's, that's basically how it works. Um, or if you have priority. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if you have priority, you can activate it like just yeah. like a normal ability, so of course you could. Yep, but otherwise, you know, if you're looking to activate that Lion's Eye Diamond to you know, respond to something. I don't know. If you're looking to maybe pay the cost of something, like, I don't know, a special action. Yeah, yeah, like, uh, that'd be, it would be allowed. That'd be an example. Mm -hmm. So, okay, let's let's talk about our next. Speaking of. Oh boy. Uh, well, not not quite, but this, this oh, is pretty not yet. sweet. All right. This is pretty sweet. Too. I do love the art on this. Uh, this yeah. is a great card. So the, the question is, we have this. And yeah. I'm gonna activate cool. the the two ability, obviously. Awesome. And you are gonna lightning bolt my, you know, some creature. Like, you know, you have you have a pretty good idea what color I'm gonna guess or what color I'm gonna say. So you're gonna lightning bolt one of my creatures mm -hmm. so that it dies and I get less mana. Does that yeah. work? So Nick those shrine to Nyx. Um, that second ability does not target. It's not a loyalty ability. It theoretically could produce mana. Regardless of whether or not David has any devotion to that color, it can theoretically produce mana. I mean, his his play only makes sense if it's yep. going to produce mana. Yeah, so. I don't know why it would matter if, you know, let's say I'm going to bolt your Steel Leaf Champion. That's a nice card that people might know It's now. a 5-4, I believe. It's a 5-4 for 3 that can't be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less. So so um, maybe maybe you you don't want to like like I don't want to bolt it, it. You but I'll do like something. Terminate or fatal push. Yeah, or some that, that'd be smart. I'm gonna fatal push it because I have revolt and I, yeah. I don't know, but it, it's just a lots good, of rule spells you can use. It's on, good devotion. On five, Anyways, so I'm gonna get rid of this guy. Unfortunately, Nykthos is a mana ability. Sure is. It Won't sure use is. the stack. So if he, if David says I'm going to activate this ability. I have to sit by and watch it happen. There's yeah. nothing I can do until he does something with it. Yep. In which case, I then, hopefully then the will eventually get in. priority. So one thing that came up in Games of Magic every now and then, because uh, these two cards were in standard together, is you'd have the Burning Tree Emissary. Uh, and, and you would play the Burning Tree Emissary, and then you'd use the two mana from the Burning Tree Emissary to activate Nykthos. And then you'd get like lots of mana because mm -hmm. like your red or green devotion would be sure. pretty high. So you can you can uh, play the lightning bolt to kill the burning tree emissary before you get the mana, mm -hmm. uh, and that works as a result of the fact that if you have the burning tree emissary, uh, that is not a mana ability as we said mm -hmm. earlier. So you can respond to getting the red green 
by lightning bolting the burning tree emissary and then they won't have the red green in their mana pool in order to activate the nykthos until after lightning bolt resolves so when they activate nykthos they won't have the burning tree emissary anymore to give them sure. the so that's kind of sweet right yeah seems pretty sweet to me um some somewhat related note uh we, we got a question in the chat if you have a nykthos and a reflecting pool with no devotion uh can the reflecting pool tap for any color so we, we have the Nykthos, uh, we, we have No Devotion, unfortunately, mm -hmm. and then we have Reflecting Pool. Darn, No Devotion. Yeah, Wait. too bad. Um, so Reflecting Pool says you add to your mana pool one mana of any type that a land you control can produce. Mm -hmm. And there is a thing in the CR that specifically says that uh, could produce means what you do is you take any mana ability of any land that you have, Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't even have to be a mana ability. It could be any ability. It could be. I'm, I'm sure. So in, chat, come up with a, an example of a land that doesn't have a mana ability, but but could still make mana. So you can produce any color of mana with Nykthos if the ability resolves. And so as a result, with the Reflecting Pool, you can uh, use the Reflecting Pool to make any color of mana if you have Nykthos out, even if. Uh, you don't meet the requirements for having that happen. Wait, wait, wait. Is that right? Is that right? I think it's not right. It's not right because uh, that that's how it works for lots of other stuff. Lots of other cool uh, abilities. Like, for example, if you have um, like a, a Vivid Land, for example. Like you have Vivid Grove. Uh, vivid Grove with no counters on it. That can tap for any color. So you can <coughs> Reflecting Pool and make any color of mana with that. Uh, mm -hmm. No problem, because if the ability was to resolve, you'd be getting any color of mana. But Nykthos doesn't work that way. Nykthos is special. Nykthos says, uh, choose a color and you add mana equal to your devotion to that, uh, to your mana pool. So if this ability resolves, there's no way you can get red out of it mm -hmm. if you don't have any red devotion, for example. There's no way you can get green out of it if you don't have any green devotion. So that means you cannot get those colors uh, out, out of uh, Reflecting Pool, because Reflecting Pool looks at if this ability was going to resolve right now regardless of whether we can pay the costs does this uh ability have a chance of being able to give you red or blue or green or whatever whatever color you want to tap it for so the the answer to that is no nykthos plus um reflective pool does not equal any color of mana out of reflective pool you have to actually have whatever devotion that you're trying to get mm -hmm. uh in order to make that work great question great question out of the yeah. chat so uh one more, one more really great question, and this is a sweet one too. I, I personally think it's a sweet one. We we have our our friend, uh, Deathrite Shaman. Yeah. And Deathrite Shaman is a, is a sweet magic card. I, I like Deathrite Shamans. And uh, Deathrite Shaman is he's got his friend the Grizzly Bear, and okay. uh, you know, Grizzly Bear wants to attack. Unfortunately, Grizzly Bear has heard some very unkind things about you. And he's trying to decide whether he wants to attack or not. About me or about you? So, so the the situation is, I have Grizzly Bear and I have Deathrite Shaman, and you have Propaganda. Oh, okay. And I want to attack you with my Grizzly Bear, but I have to pay. You two don't mana. want to attack me with Deathrite? Uh, no. The I, I can I can probably do more damage with the Deathrite by you know exactly using one something. Of the yeah, probably. Uh, or or I could use the Deathrite to make mana to help me attack with the Grizzly Bear. That's what I want to do. That's that you could do too. Um, could I? Is that, is that a is that a thing that I could do? I don't know. Do you have any lands available? Uh, so we we have one regular land. We have one Deathrite Shaman. So we're gonna we're gonna pair those up. And yes, you have a land in your graveyard, so I will okay. be able to activate the Deathrite Shaman ability. Great. So we clarified that you know this is an ability that we can use. Yeah. So you'll tap the one for your land, and that sounds great to no me. Problem. So you have one no that problem. you're paying. Sure. Um, the other one, uh, dude, I got I got a problem for you. Yeah. Yeah. So. When you are <clears throat> attacking, um, because Deathrite Shaman does not have a, a mana ability, you cannot activate it unless you have priority. Yes. This makes sense. This seems to be, you know, like a pretty straightforward thing. And this is one of those things we were saying earlier. This is something where the game is, is asking you for a mana payment. Mm -hmm. So because of propaganda is asking you for a mana payment, you can tap your land, your forest or whatever land you want to tap. You tap that for mana just fine. Yeah, no but, problem. But, um, but Deathrite is not a mana ability. Yeah, Deathrite is not a mana ability, so it doesn't get to take advantage of that. So if you want to activate and hit Deathrite Shaman's ability when you have priority, uh, you could do that in the declare attacker step. 
I mean, you but could, that's but too that late, you. and that's not going to allow you to attack with the bear. Yeah, right. Because if you well, do wait, wait, it... wait, let's let's talk about why that okay. doesn't work first. Sure. Uh, so, like with with activating the declare attacker step, the way it works is first turn based actions happen mm -hmm. in the declare attacker step. So the turn based action would be declaring your attack features, and only after that turn based action is completed do players get priority to activate mm -hmm. ability. And so because of that. Uh, in the declare attacker step, you can't activate Death Right Shaman because the first opportunity you have to activate it is after the time when you're supposed to declare mm -hmm. attackers, and that's when you have to pay the mana to, to attack through the propaganda. So if you had something like a Llanowar Elf, this would be totally fine. For sure. And there would be that's no a mana ability. So but you can, because you can it's activate that any time something's asking for yep. a mana payment. And then, so we know you can't do it after you declare attackers, so let's do it before. Let's do it in the beginning of combat. All right. So unfortunately... That's, that's unfortunate. Um, mana empties from mana pools both at the ends of phases as well as the ends of steps. Yes. So yes. the beginning of combat step is a different step from the declare attacker step. Unfortunately. So if you float the mana, um, it'll disappear before you can use it to pay. Yep. You can't pay propaganda any time during the turn. It must only be paid when attacking. Yes, that is correct. It's kind of dumb. The way it works uh this is something you used to be able to do and then they took away the ability to float mana in between steps mm -hmm. uh, so now you can't do it anymore yep now if you have omnath uh, interesting, <laughs> interesting. Uh, what, what if you have omnath? Who, who's received some fun errata wait 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 <clears throat> not the mad one well no 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 see like not the angry rem one. remember if, if you got to type it in you have to know the exact name and you have to like know how to spell all the random words <clears throat> So yeah, th this Omnath is the one that we're talking about. Yeah, uh, the the locus <laughs> of mana, and uh, not not the not the kind of locus that adds to your mana pool for each locus you control. I think Upwelling also does the same thing. Uh, I think it's no, uh, uh, definitely. Yeah. Yes. The, so Calometra, I believe. Uh, Carometra. The same, the same type of effect. So this is what is printed on Omnath. Yes. Um, what Omnath now reads is. You don't lose unspent green mana as steps and phases end. Omnath Locus of Mana gets plus one, plus one for each unspent green mana you have. Isn't that sweet, the way they changed the wording to, to you know, accommodate the fact that you don't have a mana pool anymore? Mm -hmm. Well, you, you still do have a mana pool. You do. Uh, in, in the CR, you do. But, but it doesn't not in, state it. Not in the Oracle text anymore. So right in this case, you know, you'd be able to use any floating green mana from Deathrite that you had, as long as it was green. Yep. Um, but assuming we don't have Omnath out, you cannot use it to hit propaganda. So our our good old buddy Omnath, the Locust, watching out for all that propaganda against me. Yep, yep. So you can you can pay out of the of the mana pool there. Uh, mm -hmm. if, you, if you have the Omnath in play, you can tap your death right for a green in the beginning of combat step, and the green will still be there. Uh, mm -hmm. Due to Omnath's ability, when you if yep. the time comes to pay the tax, man. So that that's that's one way you could get around. Mm -hmm. it. So that's yeah. pretty sweet. Any any questions out of the chat? Anybody have any any sweet ideas uh, about stuff going on? Any? Now don't don't worry don't worry don't feel pressured to come up with awesome rules questions on the fly no. because we we do we, we might have you know, we might have one one or two oh, more boy. special that uh, you know come come from the true stories collection here. Mm -hmm. uh, and th this is this is a, a really sweet one. So okay, oh here's boy. here's the situation. Yeah, I, I love I love how I like conditioned Dalton to be to get like okay when Dave says it's a sweet one, we, we know we gotta get the get the hard hat on here. <laughs> also, friends of judging for the win. Friends okay. of judging for the win. In case you don't know this already, Cascade and Grafdigger's Cage do not interact. So don't do it. So uh, yeah, make you're, smart you're, sideboard you're choices. You're exiling the cards and then casting it from exile. It's the same reason why Grafter's Cage doesn't stop um, Living End. So even though it kind of feels like you probably should, yeah. uh, you know, you would or... really think. So uh, unfortunately uh, for for Grafter, or what's his name on on the flavor text, uh, you know, you can definitely exile and then uh, come in from exile. So that that totally works. His his cage like with all those like spikes and stuff on the cage, you'd think that he would you know be able to get out of exile, but maybe not. Who knows? So here's the situation. I'm gonna play the shardless agent, and I'm gonna cascade into our old friend uh, ancestral uh, ancestral vision, and that's pretty sweet. Everybody everybody loves this this card, this little combination. So here's the problem. Opponent 
has a lame card. Opponent has Thalia, the Guardian of Throbin. And Thalia is going to make my uh, my Ancestral Vision cost one more. Now, cool. that's not cool. But um. it's okay because I have a Deathrite Shaman, so I can pay with the Deathrite Shaman. Wait, what? what are you talking about, Dalton? Your your groaning is if as if I would not be able to pay with the Deathrite Shaman for some weird reason. When would you want to pay with Deathrite Shaman, uh, David? Well, I mean, I mean, like, let's talk about this. I, I'm casting the spell. I just want to pay the pay the one. That I'd cast. Okay, so we've cast our uh, our Charlotte's agent. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And um, have we resolved the trigger? Uh, well, I mean, like, I, I got the, the Ancestral Vision with it. So. Mm, I see. Well, uh, this is a problem, David. Uh, why is that? Because you have already chosen to activate this ability. Yeah. So by the point that we are at, we are in the middle of resolving a spell. Or resolving an ability. That's right. Cascade ability. Yeah. Um, and by casting this spell, we do not have the ability to enter... Or, you can only use mana abilities during this time. Yeah. Do you so, see where I'm getting at? So, unfortunately, the problem is this. Um, Cascade allows me to cast the spell, mm -hmm. so that's fine. You can do that. But, but uh, I'm casting the spell in the process of resolving another spell, mm -hmm. uh, or an ability in this case. And the problem is that I don't have priority during that time, which mm -hmm. means that I can only activate mana abilities to do stuff like pay off Valio, Guardian, and Thraven. Uh, of course, the game is asking me for a mana payment, so I can activate mana abilities at this time. But I cannot activate Deathrite Shaman because it's not a mana ability. Yep. So I'm in the middle of casting a spell, or I'm, I'm trying to cast a spell in the middle of activating or resolving a trigger ability. And mm -hmm. so because I do not have priority any time in between seeing that the spell that I'm going to get to cast is Ancestral Vision and getting to cast the Ancestral Vision, uh, I can't wait until after I know what thing I'm cascading into in order to decide whether I want to activate the Death Ray Shaman or not. Yeah, so if you activate in response to the trigger, the cascade trigger, you're, you're good. fine. That's great. That's a legal play. And then you could choose to use, you know, a different mana from a land maybe if you, I don't know, you, you could use land mana whenever for Thalia. Yeah. But if you know that a Thalia is out and you know there's a chance that you might have to pay. You gotta, you gotta preemptively use that yeah. Death Ray Shaman mana. So uh, same thing with fetch lands. You can't you can't like wait to decide what land you're getting until after you see what spell you're gonna hit. Yep. Uh, because again, you can't activate fetch lands in the middle of resolving an ability either. So mm -hmm. that's kind of uncool. You gotta do it blind. So, so yep, you that that may or may not have happened to me in a real life legacy tournament where I had a death ray shaman and a fetch land that uh, were both mocking me as, as Thalia was not letting me. I, I believe the original question was an abrupt decay. I, I believe that were was you, the original thing that I cascaded into. Were you a judge at this point, Oh, yeah, David? for sure. Mm. Uh, should have better. Tis, no, tis, tis. I, actually, I should have known worse uh, because, like, I guarantee you that any normal Magic player would have just made that play and, like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll like, pay off with the Deathrite Shaman, no problem. And no eyebrows would have been raised whatsoever. Uh -huh. But unfortunately, because I actually knew how it worked, oh. uh, it was it was not legal for me to make a illegal play uh, in, in an attempt to gain advantage from that. Well, I'm so, glad you didn't yeah, cheat. I, I called a judge, and I confirmed that I was not able to make the play that I obviously should have been able to make. And uh, yeah. unfortunately, my superior rules knowledge kind of got in the way that time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, oh, well, I guess that's uh, kind of how it goes sometimes every now and then so that is all all of our sweet questions i hope everybody had an awesome time and uh, we will have some awesome topics for you next time around mm -hmm. anything else you'd like to add Dalton? i don't think so so we next right. week who, who, who. We um know. we're gonna get into something very exciting uh there's two of us here we're looking for a third yeah why david um because I'd we, say because we need a team. Yeah. So if you play standard, then we need your help because uh, that's obviously your legacy. I'd be the legacy. I'd be, yeah, I'd, I'd be modern. I'd take I'm the modern. To be modern. I'd, I'd take the modern head. But yeah, someone, See, someone who plays standard. I don't have legacy. You know? Well, you, you, if, if you have rich friends, then maybe maybe you could borrow. If someone. anyone wants to help me up with some, uh, what do I need? Fluster storms and force oh, yeah. of wills. Well, those are pretty good. Hit me up. All right. 
Well, until that time, we will see you later. Thanks for tuning in. Goodbye, everybody. Oh. Teams next week. Team format events. Come back. Have a good night.